uh, you know, uh, honestly, thinking back, there's been so many people who've influenced me in the past, teachers that have been uh, just enormously helpful to me in my development and the way I think about the world, the way I think about my work. But if I had to pick one person who uh, may have influenced me more than anyone else, I'd have to go back to high school uh, and, and talk about uh, this teacher named Judy Dufford. I used to call her Frau Dufford. And when I talk to her, I, I keep in touch with her, I try to. And when I talk to her still, I, I call her Frau Dufford now because she was my German teacher, as I said. And she, um, she was incredibly unique in, in, a, in a few specific ways, one of which uh, requires a little bit of background. I was a terrible student. I, was, uh, I, I come from a working class family. I don't have any buddy in my family who had degrees or sought college experience uh, before me, before g going to, to, to college. And that obviously I hadn't done yet in high school. But while I was in high school, I was, I was sort of a, somewhere between a D and a C student most of the time. Wasn't that interested in stuff, smoking, you know, just sort of working as a roofer with my dad and getting in trouble. Uh, and particularly not paying attention in classes, clowning around, leaving. I would just get up and walk out sometimes of my, of my classes. I was in trouble a lot of the time. But I wasn't a mean kid. I wasn't like that kind of problem. I was just a, just without direction and, and, and sort of not interested in my future. And Frau Dufford, was really interesting because she uh, did, did a couple, at least a couple of things. One is she talked to me very frankly as a person who, uh, who, who was to be taken seriously. She wasn't just trying to deal with me. She was just trying to cope with me or get me through. She uh, talked to me as if I mattered. And it's hard to explain exactly what that looked like. First of all, you have to imagine she, she was, you know, in her sort of late 40s at the time, smoking a lot, sort of angry <laughs> at me. And there was something about the quality of her anger with me and at me that got my attention, made me take her seriously because she didn't want to just yell at me. She wasn't just trying to punish me or, or put me in my place or get me out of the way. She wanted me to listen to her. And what she wanted to tell me was that I had a future and my future mattered and it mattered to her, and there wasn't anything she could do about it. She told me that she didn't blame me for the way that I was behaving, but that it was a simple sort of fact of arithmetic, almost, that I was the only one responsible for doing anything about my future. She couldn't make me do anything, and that it scared her. And so when I, she sort of broke through and, and started speaking to me, I started talking to her honestly too, and I would tell her, how I felt about school. I hated it. I would tell her what I felt about my local community in Spokane, Washington, the Spokane Valley. I hated it. I hated the provincialism. I hated the, 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 the apparent prospects that were ahead of me in my future. I didn't have any plan to go to college. I didn't think that I could go to college. And it all seemed pretty bleak. And I was sort of on my way to becoming a nihilist. And what she kind of did was let me check out. I didn't do better in her classes, but what I did do was hang out with her in her classroom and talk about things that mattered to me. Talked about things that mattered to her. Talked about the world. Talked about current events. Talked about politics. Talked about why the school irritated me so much and I couldn't deal with pep assemblies. Ultimately, she did something that I think is extraordinary, which is that when Spokane, Washington signed a sister city agreement with a city in China called Jilin, the Spokane uh, 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 government decided to put together a, a kind of a, a committee of people that would go and visit Jilin, China. And they were seeking nominees from people in the community. Frau Dufford, against any sort of conventional wisdom you could imagine, nominated me. She wanted me to go and represent Spokane. I was a D student who was uh, irritating to a lot of professors, a lot of teachers. I wasn't in college yet, had no college plan. Um, she nominated me despite getting kicked out of school on occasion from yelling at the principal and ca causing other kinds of problems, smoking in the cafeteria. And I said, you're crazy. I can't. We can't afford it. 
So she assisted me and my mother in getting a loan from the bank to fund me going to China. She went too, and I went. I went to Jilin, China, and traveled around China in 1987 uh, as part of this delegation, which was utterly my, I mean, I felt like Indiana Jones all of a sudden. It utterly transformed my view of the world. It utterly transformed my view of myself. And I went on, improbably, to try to go to college. Wasn't a good student, so I had to go to community college. I got an associate's degree uh, when I was 20 years old or so, 21. And I used that associate's degree to transfer to a major uh, uh, four-year university. I couldn't get in any other way because my grades were so shitty from, from uh, high school. Uh, and you know now I'm a full professor at the Uni University of Virginia in neuroscience. I, I've, I've asked her, why did you why did you nominate me to be part of this group and, and actually you know, work to get me in, included? And she said that she wanted to see China through my eyes. She valued my perspective. She wanted to learn from me instead of teach me. And it was it, it's a shocking, revelatory moment for me in my own development. So that's Frau Dufford.